Hello and welcome back to another week in new genre books. My name is Amelia and from Locus Magazine I'm about to tell you the top new science fiction, fantasy, and horror books being published the week of August 15th, 2023. I've got links for timing if you want to skip to your favorite category, be it science fiction, fantasy, or horror. At Locus Mag we're here to tell you about all the fresh new full-length books that didn't exist last week and are about to hit bookstore shelves just now or wherever you buy books from. And if you like this booktube content, maybe check out our monthly magazine where we do things like interview leading authors who always have fascinating things to say. Like, for example, in the August issue of Locus, the writer Karen Lord said, Write every day was the most useless piece of advice I ever got as a writer. I'm sorry, there's no one-size-fits-all, and for me, writing every day does not help me because the majority of my story formulation happens in my brain thinking and just working through things, so that by the time I'm ready to start typing, I've actually already worked out so many things already. Anyway, starting with science fiction books this week, we have two science fiction titles being published. From the talented Lauren Bucus, we have Bridge, out from Michael Joseph in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a science fiction novel of a woman's search for her mother across alternate realities. Bridge discovers that her late mother's grand delusion, a neurological device called the dream worm, actually works, opening doors to other worlds and people will do anything to get it. From the review in the August issue of Locus by Gary K. Wolf, this book has a mechanism for world hopping that owes less to quantum physics than to body horror. That would be something called the dream worm, a cocoon-like pod with tiny threads which, when consumed, turn out to be a portal to alternate realities. Bridget Kittinger Harris, called Bridge, finds such a dream worm when cleaning out her deceased mother's house with the assistance of her closest friend Dom, who is not only the novel's most appealing character, but also something of a stand-in for the reader. Bridget not only explains to Dom her family's fraught history with the dream worm, whose origins are mysterious, but the various unresolved tensions with her mother, a neurologist who, at the time of her death, was trying to compile some sort of index to the various realities she had visited. From Nick Fuller Guggins, we have The Great Transition, out from Atria in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a debut near future science fiction novel set after the climate crisis. 30 years ago, Emmy's father came to New York with a team of volunteers to save the city from rising waters and torrential storms. Meanwhile, her mother was fighting massive wildfires in the western United States. They became part of a movement that changed the world, the Great Transition, forging a new society. Now, following the public assassination of a dozen climate criminals, Emmy's mother has disappeared as a possible suspect. Emmy and her father set out to find her, but they aren't the only ones searching. Next up, horror. So much horror. We have six titles this week. From award-winning author Sarah Monette, who also writes as Catherine Addison, we have A Theory of Haunting, out from Solaris UK in trade paperback and ebook. This is a gothic novella. The new owner of Third Hop Scarp, a house notorious for strange and violent occurrences, has founded an esoteric order. Kyle Murchison Booth works as an archivist at the Parrington Museum, where the museum director demands that Booth find a way to discredit these occult teachings. Reluctantly, Mr. Booth joins the weekend seance. From Isabel Cañas, we have The Vampires of El Norte, out from Berkeley in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a supernatural western novel set in 1840s Mexico, near the U.S. border. Nine years ago, Nina was attacked by vampires. Believing that she died in the attack, her boyfriend Nestor has been on the run from his grief ever since, drinking and moving from ranch to ranch, working as a vaquero. When the United States invades Mexico in 1846, the two are reunited. Nina as a curandera, a healer striving to prove her worth to her father so that he doesn't marry her off to a stranger, and Nestor as a member of the auxiliary cavalry of ranchers and vaqueros on the way to war. From Josh Mallerman, who is most famous for writing The Bird Box, we have Spin a Black Yarn out from Del Rey in trade paperback, ebook, and audio. This is a collection of five horror novellas mixing psychological and speculative elements, all set in or around the city of Sam Hatton. The author's afterword and acknowledgments discusses the title and its long evolution. From Ramsey Campbell, we have The Lonely Lands, out from Flame Tree Press UK in trade paperback, hardcover, and ebook. This is a horror novel. Joe Hunter has begun to adjust to the loss of his wife when he hears her calling from beyond. Where am I? His urge to help leads him into her afterlife, and each journey he makes to find her leaves him less able 
to return. From James Kennedy, we have Bride of the Tornado, out from Quirk Books in trade paperback, ebook, and audio. This is a horror novel. In a small Midwestern town, a girl in a high school learns about the upcoming Tornado Day, a once-in-a-generation event where a plague of sentient tornadoes comes to destroy the town. Sometimes I just have to pause and hit rewind because I get to say phrases and sentences that have never before existed in this language. Let's go over it again. A plague of sentient tornadoes comes to destroy the town. Anyway, the only thing that keeps the whole town from getting mushed is a teen boy known as the Tornado Killer. Our protagonist teen girl is understandably drawn to this boy. From Josh Schlossberg, we have Charwood, out from Madness Heart Press in trade paperback and ebook. This is an ecological Jewish folk horror novel. After joining the tenders, a band of backwoods activists claiming to solve climate change by burning trees for energy. Yes, let's just sit with that for a moment. Burning trees for energy to solve climate change. Yes, that's what they claim. Anyway, our protagonist, Orna Tannenbaum, falls in with Rowan, the odd yet charming leader of this backwoods activist group. And then she uncovers what the tenders are really up to in the forest. And I'm not gonna tell you because I don't know what they're really up to. The book is only coming out this week, but if I did know, I wouldn't tell you. No spoilies on this channel. It's kind of our thing. No spoilies. Next up, fantasy. We have 10 titles this week. From editor Paula Garan, we have The Year's Best Fantasy, Volume 2, out from Peer in trade paperback and ebook. This is a year's best anthology with 28 short fantasy stories from 2022. Authors include La Vie Tidhar, Theodora Goss, Anya Ao, Curtis C. Chen, Sophia Samatar, and Sam J. Miller. From T. Kingfisher, aka Ursula Vernon, we have Thorn Hedge, out from Tor in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a fairy tale fantasy novella, a twist on the story of Sleeping Beauty. Toad shaped Toadling was stolen from her family by the fairies, but she grew up safe and loved in the warm waters of Fairyland. Now she's an adult, and the Fae ask Toadling to return to the human world and offer a blessing of protection to a newborn child. From Ellie Modisette Jr., we have Contrarian, out from Tor in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a gas lamp political fantasy novel, third in the Grand Illusion series. Recently elected to the Council of 66, Stefan Deckard is the first counselor who is an isolate, a man invulnerable to the emotional manipulations and emotional surveillance of empaths. Protests against unemployment and poor harvests have become armed riots as the people sink deeper into poverty, and it appears that someone high up in the government and corporations has supplied arms and explosives to insurrectionists. From Lonnie Forbes, we have Face the Night, out from Blackstone Publishing in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a young adult fantasy novel. Catriona McGregor is one of the blessed, but now she's the adopted daughter of an outlaw and wanted by the authorities. The blessed are supposed to use their gifts to carry out missions for the patron saints, but she can only imagine that Saint Prudentia has made a terrible mistake in choosing her. Still, her gift has never deserted her. From M. A. Carrick, we have Labyrinth's Heart, out from Orbit US in trade paperback, ebook, and audio. This is a fantasy novel, the third in the Rook and Rose trilogy. M. A. Carrick is a pen name for Marie Brennan and Alec Helms. Wren's plan was to pose as the long-lost daughter of the noble house Trementis. She would secure a fortune for herself and her sister, and then vanish. She ought to have known that in the City of Dreams, nothing is ever so simple. Now she is Wren, con artist and thief, also Renata, the celebrated Trementis heir. She is Arenza, the pattern reader and political rebel. And she is the Black Rose, a vigilante who fights alongside the legendary Rook. From Alice Hoffman, we have The Invisible Hour, out from Atria in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a fantasy time travel novel. Mia Jacob lives in the community, an oppressive cult in Western Massachusetts where contact with the outside world is forbidden and books are considered evil. As a girl, a copy of Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter gave her hope. Now as a young woman, while visiting Hawthorne's grave, she is transported back to 1837 Salem to meet Hawthorne himself. From Sasha Allsberg, we have Fracturing Fate, out from Inkyard Press in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a young adult fantasy novel. While battling the demigod Law, Clara is catapulted 500 years into the past in a battle that kills her sweetie Callum. Clara is the last pillar of time, an anchor point in the timeline of the world. 
treacherous enemies, both magical and human, chase her into 1500s Scotland. In a battle across history and the present, life and death, Clara must fight to choose her own fate and avenge the life of her love. From Karen Hawkins, we have The Secret Recipe of Ella Dove, out from Gallery, in hardcover ebook and audio. This is a fantasy-slash-magical realism novel, third in the Dove Pond series. Driven by a haunting dream, acclaimed magical baker Ella Dove is coming home to Dove Pond for an extended visit. Ella believes the dream is a sign it's time she confronts her mentor, who falsely accused Ella of stealing her coveted family recipe book, known as the Book of Cakes. From Alice James, we have Grave Suspicions, out from Solaris US in trade paperback, ebook, and audio. This is a humorous, dark fantasy mystery novel, third in the Lavington Windsor Mysteries series. Tony Windsor is trying out the English country life as an estate agent, which is complicated by her raising zombies and dating a vampire. Then she's called on to investigate who clubbed a Cornish cheese millionaire to death while he was alone in a locked room. From Ken Schrader, we have Crimson Whisper, out from Neo Paradoxa in trade paperback and ebook. This is a historical fantasy novella, the 16th in e Spec's Systema Paradoxa series of novellas about cryptids, illustrated by Jason Whitley. In an ongoing effort to thwart the villainous Order of the Sanguine Hand, agents Lydia Wainwright and Keila Holliday of Her Majesty's Bureau of Preternatural Affairs journey to the Congo to investigate a potential threat identified only as Crimson Whisper. That wraps up this week. Thanks for spending some time with us. At Locus, we set out to tell you everything relevant that's happening in the science fiction fantasy horror publishing space. Do me a favor, mush some of these buttons here, let your fingers do the walking. It matters to us and helps us out a lot if you can like and subscribe and turn notifications on. The magazine and YouTube channel are a labor of love. We are at Locus Mag or at Locus Magazine on most platforms. You can read more about the science fiction fantasy and horror field over at www.locusmag or support us on our Patreon. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. Come back and see us again soon, and we'll be here next week with more new books.